everybody. It's Rich with Anglers in Annapolis, and I wanted to welcome everybody to Offshore Week. So um, saw some of the teaser trailers for this. So Offshore Week, we're starting this week off on Monday with Captain Jack Springle um, with uh, a pro staff with Shimano, runs a guide service up north in the northeast. And um, today we're going to talk a little bit about Shimano Tackle, the rods and reels that they offer, um, talk a little bit about fishing up in the Northeast, uh, the way that Jack does, and how it kind of differs from what we do down here in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, as most of you know, Mid-Atlantic, we're, we're pretty stuck with our 30s and our 50s and our 80s, big reels, big rods. Um, you know, we love our trolling, um, and that all works really well. But uh, up in the Northeast, they, they tackle things a little bit differently. They're going after these big pelagics, but they're doing it on much lighter tackle, and they're utilizing a lot of the really cool technology that Shimano has out with much lighter reels, much smaller reels, um, you know, lighter rods, but they still have plenty of drag. They're, they're little tiny powerhouses. Um, so um, without any further ado, Jack, welcome to the show. Welcome to the program here. Um, yeah, it's good to have you on board. So um, why don't you uh, talk to us a little bit about you, about your guide service, kind of what you do up north, and uh, let's, let's get it rolling here. Okay, I've been involved in the tackle industry since I was 14. I'm 41 now. Um, started off behind the counter, just cleaning tanks, started learning from the old guys. Um, before long, people started hiring me to hop on their boats and learn their program. So I, I started old school uh, using big gold reels and heavy mono and just real traditional techniques up here in the Northeast because we're not that fast either. You know, we, we like to hang on to our old ways as well. Some people still do. Uh, but I got into the light tackle game uh, right around 2007, seven eight. We started getting a lot of influence and a lot of flux of uh, small bluefin coming in up here in the northeast in addition to our access to the northeast canyons and we got we became kind of aficionados of chasing the light tackle spinning gear right around that time braid really started to pick up and braid started changing the way we fished our gear it was at first braid destroyed everything we put it on you know, we were putting it almost like bass type tackle to try and cast these fish and it was destroying the rods they were blowing up Reels were getting ripped out of reel seats. Guides were getting cut in half. I mean, nothing held up. But uh, Shimano continued to push the envelope, and they gave us real technology. Uh, you know, started at the higher ends like Stella. But as every time there was some kind of upgrade to any of that technology, even Tiagra, um, and, and eventually advents like reels like Metallica, every time something got approved, that technology, Shimano would just pass down to every single generation of reel. And that brings us to where we are now. Now we have rods and reels made out of High Power X and Spiral X and a, a lot of new technologies that allow rods to bend to tolerances without having to thicken the walls and it just creates much more powerful, much lighter gear. Um, up here in the Northeast, like I said, we, we embrace that run and gun style spinning gear thing, but that eventually spread in tech wise into, into material construction to our offshore trolling game, our baiting game, our jigging game. And as we'll get into, it actually meshed all of it into a much different approach to what we use now. Um, I guide out of Rhode Island almost exclusively, but um, some of my clientele, depending on what they want to catch, I'm licensed in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, um, and all of our water kind of blends together up here. You know, it's a big corner here in the Northeast, so I fish all of those bodies of water, depending on where the Gulf Stream is influencing it or wherever the bite happens to be best for whatever species I'm targeting at the time. Very cool, very cool, and it sounds like... Uh... You know, it's it's a lot of fun doing this on light tackle. I, I haven't really done a lot of it personally. I mean, like I said, I'm from the Mid Atlantic. I do a lot of this on bigger gear, so I'm really anxious to get out there and use some of this lighter stuff. Um, so, you know, let's talk about the evolution. Like you said, you know, braid is really what changed it all. Uh, much smaller in diameter for its breaking strength. We can fit a lot more on a bigger reel, but we can also use smaller reels and still get the same line capacities you know, that we would if we were using a bigger reel um, because those diameters are so much smaller. You know, Power Pro is, has really revolutionized, uh, you know, a lot of what we do nowadays. It's become a staple in, in, in most tackle shops, definitely in ours. Um, so let's talk about some of the outfits that you would typically go after. Let's let's start with tuna because I know you do a lot of tuna stuff. A lot of our guys are tuna guys. Um, you know, we're, we're using, uh, you know, 30s and 50s. We're putting them on big, heavy rods, and we're filling them with, you know, 50, 80-pound mono. What's the typical setup for you if you're going after tuna, um, you know, and, and talk about the different techniques. So if you're going to troll, I don't know how much trolling you guys really do up there. I'm sure you do a little bit here and there. Uh, but, you know, definitely we'll talk about jigging. Um, and both, uh, let's talk a little bit about the outfits for conventional and, and spinning, which we don't 
do a ton of down here. Um, but, you know, I, I think you and I agree we should definitely do some more. So let's run through some basic uh, setups, some outfits. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll go into where I think people should start and where you can go with it. I mean, obviously, you've got top shelf products out there, um, depending on the size of the fish or which clientele we have or what we're fishing. I mean, we'll go as high as using Stella's. We'll use Talica's. But to get into it and, and to look at our approach, I mean, you've got a lot of new options out there, like new Speedmaster, um, or you can even start off traditional, just going a little bit lighter, but adjusting to braid with reels like uh, TLD or Tyranos, um, and, and even some of the smaller size Tiagras. The, the tolerances and the drag um, are phenomenal what these reels can perform. Um, but when we're going offshore, we're looking at, you know, when you say lighter gear, it's lighter in your hands, it feels lighter, but by no means is it lighter in its capability of landing fish. It's just easier on the body. Um, having to hook up into harnesses is just old school. You don't have to do it anymore. I mean, a simple plate, um, the, the ability for these rods to load under pressure and reduce the amount of work where the angler is actually fighting the gear and the fish, it's now lo no longer the case. Now, now you're just fighting the fish, you're not fighting the gear. Um, so a traditional setup for us is something in that five, six foot range. Um, and it depends, you know, you can switch to whatever type of rods you want to fish. Uh, up here, we're going to use something like some of the grappler series, but uh, we're more excited using some of the new blue water casting series under the Talus line. Um, also, I like the new Talavera series. Um, and if you're going to get into jigging, you can also check out the new uh, Travala PX series, which is kind of like the best of both worlds between the old school inshore Travala S type feel but with some of the traditional Kavala F style uh, blank construction. So you've got a wide range of variety that you can both troll, cast, and jig with um, all under one platform. So you're not having to put 50 different rods on the boat. Um, our typical offshore program, we run everything. So unless I have a client who specifically wants to catch fish on bait, specifically wants to catch fish on a troll uh, or on a jig, uh, most clients just want to catch a fish. You know, ideally you go to try to catch it on one terms, but if you leave the dock without one of those programs in place and you don't catch fish, whose fault is that? So having rods that can you know, multi-purpose or can cross over like some of these ones I've mentioned here are going to make a big difference. We'll run offshore. We're looking for life. Uh, again, we might be fishing Cape Cod where you've got cold water from the Labrador current, um, just getting a little trickle from the south with the Gulf Stream, and it's creating this big implosion of life there because Cape Cod sticks out so far into the ocean. It's just such a significant landmass. And you have under, you know, a lot of geography under the water, like Stellwagen Bank, that aggregates bait. Uh, when we're running out there, we're looking for the instant life. So we're less on the troll. We're more looking for targeted marks on the screen of bait, large uh, marine mammal life, uh, bird life. And we're going to target that uh, specifically more so jigging, baiting, <clears throat> a little bit less with the troll. But when we head south of Rhode Island, um, all the way out towards New York, it's, you're covering a lot more water. You don't necessarily always have the luxury of that specific structure. Um, so what we're looking for are the signs of life um, and then we'll, or, or a water change or a temperature change or a weed line. And we're going to put the gear out and troll. But in our trolling spread, we will integrate the traditional reels like the Agras on some of our, we, we troll a lot of bars and diamonds up here in the Northeast because you just want to cover a lot of water with a lot of commotion. Um, we also fish a lot of skirted baits as well with, uh, with, uh, ballyhoo on the back, something to that effect. But some of our top producing baits we're actually catching on our jig rods in the troll. So we're using diving baits like Nomad Series Divers, um, Rappel has got uh, X Raps, you know, CD Countdowns, anything that's going to get down 30, 40 feet down below the spread out of the wash. Um, and you can put these on these shorter rods, these five, six foot rods that have the more almost jig style construction. But because the braid can move through the uh, high quality guides, you don't have to worry about roller guides anymore. And, uh, you know, these rods are much more sensitive. You can actually see the rod tip moving and you can see the cadence of the bait. You know if you've got a weed on there. And obviously if a fish hits it, you know, the rod's going to load over. Uh, but what, what makes it unique in addition to the fact that that reel is capable of doing the trolling in our spread, uh, if we turn around and we hook up on a fish, now you can take one of the spinning style setups uh, like um, Talavera or... Uh, or even under the talus line, and cast uh, an additional bait back there into your spread while you're tight, and you can get an additional fish on or throw a popper into your spread and start working that popper while you've got one on uh, whatever your down bait was or anything else that's, that can help you get tight. Or, inversely, if you're marking fish, you can drop a jig while someone's dealing with a fish or landing it as well. So it's just it adds another whole 
platform you know that you can add to your already existing program that's going to give you a lot more options with having to put less gear on the boat you know having a rod that can cast having a rod that can troll or you can turn around and start a chunk you know you can get a little chum spread going and drop some chunks all in the same gear but not have to worry about sacrificing power having a lighter weight setup and more control is just it's a huge advantage if you can tap into it yeah, and I think the name, the name of the game is, like you said, it's versatility. You know, the the technology that's in these rods and in these reels, you know, like you said, the, they're light tackle in the respect that they're light in hand, but they're, like you said, by no means lighter in action and power. Um, you know, a lot of those Speedmasters, they have like 40 pounds of drag. That's a ton of drag in that small of a reel. Most people um, can hold on to 40 pounds of drag. It's yeah. phenomenal how, how powerful 40 pounds of drag is. Yeah, exactly. So the the and, and the spool size on these can hold plenty of that braid. Um, you know, a nice light rod. So you're right. You can troll with them. You can jig with them. And some of these you can even do a little casting with, a little pitching with, if you needed to, to some breaking fish. Um, you know, so for us down here in the Mid Atlantic, you know, coming out of Ocean City mostly, um, for most of our customers, we've got the inside lumps. So you're running like 30, 40 miles out, and you're catching you know, yellowfin and bluefin and, uh, you know, occasionally some white marlin will come in. So you don't have to go out to the canyon. So similar to those shallower water areas you were talking about, that's where a lot of this stuff can be used. I mean, you can try this stuff out at the canyons if you've got fish underneath of the boat. But uh, for a lot of those guys in the smaller boats that we that we tend to see, you don't need to run terribly far. And this lighter gear is perfect. Uh, you don't have big giant reels taking up space on the boat and everything. So, you know, you definitely should be. The Speedmaster, too, you've got the, the ability to change out your cams, so you can even switch between, you know, drag setup for mono or braid very easily without having to do any kind of major adjustment to the reel. You're just going to change your drag cam out on there. Yeah, way. exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about some of the, the technology without diving too deep into it. You know, I know with the rods, we talked about the reels. They're, they're getting smaller, you know, much stronger gearing, much stronger drag, and a much smaller package, which is really cool. The rods are what really kind of impressed me. You know, when we started getting some of these rods in, I kind of feel the same way that most customers do when they see them in the store. They look at this and they go, I don't know. It's an awfully thin blank. It's awfully small. It doesn't really weigh a whole lot. Um, you know, where's the rollers, like you said, you know. So, you know, the, the cool thing about what Shimano has been doing is uh, more recently, especially with some of these, uh, the, the uh, Talavera, uh, with the uh, Talus and with the uh, Travala is the PX. So utilizing that high power X. Um, so it's pretty cool how they're, they're spiral wrapping that higher carbon material around to give it better hoop strength. It just really does lighten up the rod. So um, talk about some of the applications that you would use those with, you know, kind of how, how that really plays into your clientele. Uh, it, it, again, whether you're trolling or you're baiting or you're jigging, you know, PX, uh, taking advantage of that high power X. High power X doesn't just prevent ovalization, which is you know, your catastrophic rod failure. It also reduces torsion resistance. So when you're casting that or whether you're jigging that, you don't get that twist in the rod tip. So there's less drag on that line. And it gives you way more control over your rod tip when you're fighting the fish, too. So not only will it reduce ovalization, but it's also going to improve your overall control, not only on the cast, but while fighting a fish. Um, and it really what it does is it really lightens up the rod. Normally, to have a rod with that kind of loading potential um, and the ability to withstand that kind of pressure under pounds of drag, you would have to make an extremely thick walled rod. But that crisscross series of carbon fiber tape that they're using over that blank when they design it, is what's providing that and it's ultra light and it's super thin so uh you know my favorite i, I used to do a, a talk up here in the northeast uh, specifically on speed jigging or butterfly jigging that kind of nature and one of my slides was this over the top gorilla you know juice head guy with a little rod in his hand and i said you know if you just went out trying to jig the fine fish all day after about one season you'd look like this guy and the point was you know trying to sit there and work against that gear just to find fish if you weren't marking them would be silly but you know, having high power X technology and a rod blank, your rod is literally significantly lighter, uh, you know, even more so than half as light, more so like, you know, a quarter as light as a, as a traditional setup. So now when you're doing that kind of aggressive moving of a metal jig, you're not lifting the rod, then lifting the jig and then trying to, you know, impart action on the line using that braided line. Now the rod just moves very easily. So you can almost just rotate the handle of the reel and allow the rod to lift load while you're working the jig it's a lot easier on the body having that that high power x that that lighter weight construction but with all the strength none of the weight very cool uh, you know let's talk about your your typical setup as far as like leaders and stuff so you know a lot of guys that are running braid 
Um, you know, there, there's the term top shot, there's the term leader, um, you know, so if I'm setting up a jigging outfit with one of these speed masters with either a, uh, you know, a, a lighter Talavera or, um, you know, one of the, the, the PX rods, whether it's Tullus or it's uh, Travala, which would be a perfect jigging rod. What am I, what am I setting up? What am I, how, what kind of leader am I, system am I using? And kind of explain that setup for me. Certainly. So you've got a few options when it comes to leaders, none of which involve a swivel. Okay, uh, you want a streamlined leader system. And you remember, I mean, if you're popping or you're fishing a surface plug on a spinning version of one of these setups, you want a shorter leader as possible, believe it or not. You can get away with a very short leader. You, you really don't want it on the reel at all. You want it in front of the reel and just about as far off the rod tip as you would use the cast. And that's it. Because when, when you add the leader onto the reel and you go to make a cast, it creates a much larger obalization or, or you know, a spiral coming off that blank going to that first guide's. And that's where you get your problems with the hang-ups. You know, you really want that guy that not to go straight through. Um, up here in the Northeast, I've completely, and most of the anglers that I fish with now, we've all completely embraced the FG knot. Uh, it, it's a, it comes across looking like, you know, advanced chemistry or calculus to somebody, but it's really nothing more than crisscrosses and half hitches, just multiple of them. Um, I tie a version that I've picked up a few different things from a few other guys mixed together called a modified FG which is just an extended finish on there, which I'd be happy to show you guys down the road. Um, but, you know, you can even get away with a, a tool called the PR bobbin knot uh, tool. And that PR bobbin tool will not only allow you to tie an FG knot, but you can tie a PR knot. Uh, it's another great one to look up. And it's nothing more than a tool that does a series of light twists kind of spaced out tight. And then you backspin it almost like serving a bowstring on a, on a crossbow or on a, on a compound bow. And then it's just a series of half hitches that lock it down. Now, if that seems a little too annoying for you, you can still use that PR bobbin tool or a bowstring serving tool, and you actually will get a hollow core braid, and you splice your leader inside your hollow core, only about three feet. But instead of taking that hollow core and just splicing your, your leader into the hollow core, leave about 18 to 20 inches of tag end, start your splice there, go into your main line on your reel, and then once you're inside this reel, once you're, I'm sorry, once you're inside the line going back to your reel, take that tag end, put it on your PR bobbin tool, and you're just going to do about two and a half inches of loosely spaced but tight wraps, and then backspin it just like a PR bobbin tool, a couple of alternating half inches and pull it tight. That'll never come out. That serve is mint. You don't need glue. You don't need wax. You don't need any of that stuff. And you can also learn with hollow core to create your own wind-on leaders pre-made, which can also help, you know, kind of in combat. You break a fish off, you're in a tournament, you got to get a line, a leader back on there quickly. Um, what we'll do is we'll just take that tag end of that uh, hollow core, splice it back into itself. And then, again, I can give you links to tutorials if you want to include them in this, but you're going to create your own eye splice loop, which is 100% strong. And then you're going to do the same thing with your pre-made leaders. You can actually splice a tag end in, with your fluorocarbon or your mono, whatever you happen to be using for leader material. On the alternate side of that, maybe like three feet away, splice in an eye loop, and now you have that loop-to-loop -loop cat's paw connection. And, you know, years back, they would tell you go through three, five times with that loop-to-loop, -loop, and then you kind of make that offshore loop like you do with a swivel knot if you had a bimini. Don't. Just go through once. It's actually proven if you try it, break them. You know, you can go through three, five times and make a loop and pull it. If you just go through once and pull, it's just as strong. In fact, you know, one of the things we can touch on at some point here is we daytime sword up here in the Northeast, and we're doing it with the same kind of gear. We're using Palavera Series Blue Water Deep Drop Rods with uh, with just Shimano Beastmasters. And we're, we're landing fish three, 400 pounds on them, and we're using 80-pound or 65-pound braid. And all we're doing is tying a bimini in our braid because we're not using a hollow core. We're using uh, a depth hunter or we're using uh, Max Quattro to reduce the diameter, get a little less drag. So we tie a bimini to that. And then we have a, our, our wind-on sword leader, which just has a loop, and it's just a single pass through, one loop, and it holds beautiful. Very cool. Yeah, I like that setup. And, and I like, you know, the minimal, minimalization of all that. You know, it's not these big, long, complicated uh, things. So uh, uh, what, what kind of jigs are you typically going after with tuna? Is there anything in particular that you like using, certain styles? You're going to see a lot of, a lot of uh, push now with, for jigs like Monarch and... Uh, Jigs that are going to fall flat, flat fall style, but you can also, um, you know, speed jigs and butterfly jigs, traditional butterfly. Uh, it all depends on the feeding pattern. So when you've got bluefin or yellowfin or big eye or mahi, whatever you happen to be jigging at that time, 
and they're more passively feeding or they're closer to the bottom we usually want a jig that's just going to flutter and fall so you might reel it back up let it flutter and fall something like a monarch uh, but when you've got jigs that when you've got fish that are moving through the water column more rapidly you want something that's going to be a little more butterfly style um, or what i call a freestyle jig which is just going to be a jig that you're going to get action one of two ways the first way you're going to get that action is drop that jig directly into the mark so the fish you have and it's one lift, one turn. So it's one lift, one turn, one lift, one turn, one lift, one turn, one lift, one turn. And that's going to load the rod, load the rod, load the rod. And what that really is, it's like casting out a spook lure and just doing the chop and reel. It's going to do this in the water column coming up. You know, you're just going to get a, a flutter coming up. The other way to get bit on it, and this is very popular, is to lift the rod large, kind of flip the jig, reel up the slack, lift the rod hard, reel up the slack. And what that's going to do is the jig's going to come up, flutter a little, come up, flutter a little, come up flutter a little and that that's going to produce a strike that's fun because usually you go to do the lift and it just stops short on you you know that's there's that's about the coolest thing in sport fishing besides watching a topwater strike it's a jig stop in my opinion it's it's exciting yeah, especially sounds... if you've got a fish on the troll or something and you you know you drop a jig because you're marking them while you're fighting that fish and you hook up on another that's just a really rewarding experience it's... well yeah and i think you hit on a good point there you know it, these rods should be at the ready because you know even if you're trolling you hook into a fish, you start working on that fish. Like you said, there's probably a couple of more around. So having that readily available to hook, you know, get a double hook up or even sometimes a triple or, or a quad uh, of fish on is, is definitely, it's worth having these in the rod holders rigged, ready to go. Um, even if you don't want to head out and do that particular style of fishing, it's a great way to add more fish into the spread. And that's, that's the name of the game with offshore and tuna fishing is that extra fish. You know, anytime you can put the extra fish in the boat, because you did something preparation wise and you were ready for it. You know, if you're proactive versus being reactive, you put a lot more blue water fish in the boat than you do just reacting to stuff around you. you know, anticipate that stuff or have a rod that can cover those two things. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's change. Good. Go ahead. Okay. I'm ready. Oh, I was going to say, let's change gears. Let's go to the swordfish. So you mentioned that before. Um, you know, we, we are going to talk later in the week about daytime sorting uh, more in depth. Um, and we do have some some daytime sorting combos that'll be available. Let's talk about those combos. Let's talk about those rods and reels. So uh, daytime sorting, it's something that's become really popular down in Florida and it's been working its way up the coast. It's made it all the way up to the Northeast where you guys are. Um, you know, we don't have to go out in the middle of the night, wait for these fish to come up to the surface. We have the technology because of things like braid, because of the reels that we have um, and the rod technology has drastically changed. Um, now we can go after these fish in the middle of the day when they're on the bottom in that deeper water. So let's walk through the kind of the typical outfit and, and techniques that you guys are using up north for, for going after swordfish. So there's a, there's a few different techniques. You, we, we still have the traditional large, you know, heavy duty power reels, short rod guys that go out there and just, that's what they do. They, they target swordfish all the time, deep drop. That's what they leave the dock to go get swords. They come back with them we've mixed it into our offshore program. So again, now we're using the rods like <clears throat> the new uh, Talavera Blue Water uh, Deep Drop Series. And even though that rod is designed for deep drop, it's off, actually, we started making jigging blanks into deep drop rods up here in the Northeast to match the Beastmaster because we, we have a much more lightweight rod that we can actually stand up and fight a fish with as opposed to just sitting on the bucket and watching the rod load and waiting for it to come up. And you know, we, we base our offshore program you know, we, we kind of do it by, by what's going to hit early. So we try to get out in the dark and, you know, we, we hammer that tuna bite in the marlin bite first light. And then as the day goes on, we can go out into the, some of the deeper water off the edges, try for a blue or a white. Um, but typically what we do is, you, you know, in the past, it was just go hop pots or hop some kind of structure looking for dolphin, mahi mahi, whatever you want to call them. Um, but a few years back, we started taking electric drills out and attaching these things called crankies to the sides of our tiagras and then we burned some drills out but we were trying to deep drop with them and then shimano introduced the beast master and it was just a complete game changer for us you know the first couple times we dropped uh and we got tight we didn't believe it it was just you know, north, it wasn't very very popular here in the northeast at all and we couldn't believe how effective it was it, you know our, our midday program became very different so our our typical setup up here is we're using a beast master 8000 we're matching that up with uh, it used to be custom rods, but now we have the availability of the, uh, Tal the Talavera Blue Water Series deep drop rod. And we're spooling that with either 65 pound or I like to use 80 pound uh, depth hunter. I like depth hunter for a number of reasons. 
Uh, the biggest reason I like it is, you know, you get that color change every so many feet. So you, it gives you a real perception as to what's going on while you're fighting that fish. You know, you can tell when you're losing, you can tell when you're gaining, even without watching the meter on the reel. Uh, and sometimes we're actually fishing uh, an additional rod now because we're, we're going to put one out on, we're actually just started using the floats up here as well. So we'll have a buoy rod in addition to our regular daytime rod. So we'll fish a pair of Beastmaster 8000s, two Talavera setups. Uh, we, of course, we still have all our jig stuff ready to go in our top water gear just in case something comes by. But what's really cool with these options are is you can take your sword leaders off of these rods and this still got you still have the drag and the fishability of what I would consider a 50 setup by, while still using the Beastmaster in one of these setups. So now there's two more rods you can put on your boat that you control with and fish bait if you wanted to. They can even jig. You can actually put them on a jig setting. So if you're fishing an overnight, put a glow jig on that thing, send it down X amount of feet, put it on jig mode, and that rod will sit there and work a jig for you and get tight on its own. You'll hear it go, nyeh, 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 it makes this like telltale load sound. And it's uh, nice. uh, I, you know, it's really exciting to have that kind of tech for a fraction of the price of like, you know, I don't want to get specific, but I mean, you look at like LPs or some of these, you know, 5Gs to kick out for a reel is tough, you know. Now you now you got a reel that can work like a daytime sword reel. Is it the same as a, as a you know, an LP? No, I'd never make that argument. If you're going commercial sword fishing all day on a down east and you are know, 50 foot down east and you want to sit on a bucket and watch the rod bend all day, go for it. But we were actually hooking big eye up here in the middle of the day in 15, 1600 feet of water trying to target swordfish. So, I mean, some of the bycatch you can catch. Guys down your way, I think, are catching opas. You know, yeah. it, it's remarkable what's what's coming out of this deep water fishery. We're only just scratching the surface of it. There's there's stuff down there like palm frets and all sorts of cool stuff you can hook. And it's only a matter of time before you guys are doing a lot of big eye and stuff, too. They're, they're down there. They've got to be down there you know, in that deeper water when the time is right. So um, having setups like those Beastmasters on the Talavera Blue Water Series uh, daytime sword rods, those rods are designed for deep drop, but they're more than capable of being able to also add as trolling rods in your spread as well. So it, it just circles right back around to this whole like all inclusive package you can have with, with setups like that. So, you know, we daytime sword actively as part of our regular program. So we're going offshore. We're, we're running center consoles. We just, you know, we're pushing our fuel, our fuel capacities to the limit within safe ranges. So we're small boats too. You know, we're seldom, we're 28 to, maybe 35 feet at the most you know in some cases we're out there in 28 footers and 26 footers as long as we bring the extra fuel so we've got to pick our weather windows but we're we're anywhere from 50 to 120 miles offshore doing it in a small boat so you know room is an issue you know you, you don't have the room to store like a big sporty wood so you know having these setups that are lighter weight smaller taking up less room but capable of all the heavy lifting and multi-purpose you know you control with them you can bait with them daytime sword with them and then turn around and troll and jig with them as well you, know, you can pick those rods up and fight fish you don't just have to fight them in electrical the whole time you can switch it to manual it's just really cool i mean it, it's an exciting option to have through this uh through shimano's pack it's neat stuff well let's stay on the topic of billfish so you talked we talked about the swords you had mentioned blue marlin and white marlin you know you guys do see them up here you know ocean city likes to claim it's the white marlin capital of the world you know quite a few of our guys like to go after those uh those pointy little guys but um you know Traditionally, we've used the Tullus rods, six, six and a half foot with, um, you know, like a Tiernos 20 or, or maybe even a Tiernos 30 for a long rigger, just for a little more line capacity. But, you know, a lot of people would love to move to the Talica, but, you know, they can get a little pricey. So these, these Speedmasters are basically built off of like a Talica kind of platform, just not the machined, you know, frame and whatnot. So it's a little more affordable for, for the small boat guys that don't want to invest a ton of money. Um, Talk about when you do go after those those uh, billfish. What what exactly are you guys running? How is it uh, how is it different up there for you guys? Same thing, you know. If we're in that, if we're looking for that reel that's not going to break the bank, now that you have, I mean, if you like to fish a Tiranos before, you like to fish a TLD, and you're comfortable with that reel, it's almost like one of them married a Talica and had a baby, and that's where you got the Speedmaster. You know, now now you got the Speedmaster twenty five. I mean, I, I got a cheat sheet on the line capacity on it, but it's uh. You know, with braided line, you can fit 470 yards, 100 pound braid on that reel, and you got 40 pounds of drag, adjustable cam on it, and the price was not what 339. I mean, that's one quarter of the price of some of the higher end reels. And now you've got a Hagane body, so you don't have a, a synthetic plastic body. What is it? What is Hagane? You hear these terms, you know, 
Um, Shimano doesn't throw a term out there for nothing. Hagane body is this rigid body uh, that's super lightweight. But what you're going to get, the biggest difference between that housing and anything else is zero flex. So this, when you're putting a lot of pressure on these reels, especially you got a big blue one comes up and grabs one of your whitey baits or you got a good whitey on and you're using one of the smaller speed masters. Uh, when you when you sock down on your drag, you're not going to get the flex that the gear can create in those those lighter weight, almost synthetic graphite housings. The Hagane body is going to create a, just a rigid, tight, encapsulated case for all the gearing to work. So every time you make a motion or you put energy into that reel, it's transferred directly to reeling power on that fish. You get zero flex or torsion, and you notice it. You'll feel it. You'll feel it just clearing your lines. I guarantee it. When you, and you know, especially when you you got the ability to drop into two gears with this reel, you can go high or low. But if you're just clearing your spread quick, you'll you'll feel a huge difference in the pickup with a Hagane body reel than you would a traditional graphite or, or plastic almost style housing. Yeah, very cool. I mean, it, it, this stuff. It's. I remember when we first started seeing them uh, when they came to the store. They, it's amazing how well they feel. Um, and and you're right. You're going to notice it right out of the gate. Um, well, I think that about wraps up what we were going to talk about. Um, yeah, I appreciate you joining, and uh, we'll post some links to your guide service. So if anybody at home is interested in, um, you know, kind of getting out on the water and experiencing this before they dive too far into it, um, you know, you're you're up north, but you know, it's a great place to do this technique of fishing, and it's definitely transferable down here. You know, like like we said, that versatility of being able to do a little bit of everything with pretty much the same outfit is is a nice is a nice feature to have especially on these smaller boats um so uh, uh captain jack i appreciate you joining uh thank you very much for for uh, helping us out with this and uh if you guys have any other questions during the week please feel free to send us a message post it online on social media or uh, drop us an email um check out our website for all the packages that we have together for the event and uh, we hope to see you guys in the shop. And uh, don't forget, too, we're offering virtual shopping for this. So if you don't want to come in the store because of COVID, you can definitely give us a call, schedule an appointment online on our website. And uh, we will help you pick out all, all these wonderful outfits that we have, uh, kind of talk through what will work best for you. So um, we appreciate you for joining, Jack. Thank you very much. Thanks for having and, me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we hope to see you guys when you come into the shop. So good luck out there. Have fun. Mm -hmm.